What's up, guys? Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Hope you had a great time celebrating the birth of Jesus. I know at our house we exchange gifts and presents and stuff, and I actually got something that's going to be going behind me. You can see there's the uh, TV and the old Nintendo there. Uh, I have something replacing that, but I'm not done with it yet. Anyway, you'll see that in a future video at some point. This position is fascinating, and the, there's two reasons why it's fascinating. Number one, there's an incredible way to win the game with just the rooks against all of these pieces. But the second reason it's fascinating is because it actually tricks Stockfish. So I'm going to prove it to you here. If I pull up the analysis board, this is currently running. Look at this. I'm, I'm just hovering now. This is currently running. Stockfish analyzing. It says rook to e7 check leads to a draw. Now, I have it only set to depth 22. So some people you know, are going to complain that, well, you didn't let it run long enough or whatever. But the point is, on the default settings here, Stockfish is confused. It just thinks it's a draw and it's wrong. It's just wrong. And I don't know why, but that's like really satisfying to me, you know, because stockfish and chess engines in general always just beat us as humans. You got mittens, bots, and just to be able to just pull a puzzle from over a hundred years ago, throw it in here and stockfish be confused. I, I just, I just really enjoy that. So hope you guys can appreciate that too. Stockfish is just confused. It actually stays confused for the first like several moves of this puzzle. It doesn't understand what's going on which is great. So before I say anything else, white to play and win. What's the winning move here for white? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, the winning move is rook to e7, check. Now, at first glance, that might not have been a move that you thought about, and, and here's what you need to understand. Well, there's a couple things. Number one, when you're trying to checkmate a king that's stuck on the back with two rooks, you want to make sure that the rooks have room to work as far as a distance away from the king, okay? So for example... This move is not checkmate, even though we're controlling both of these ranks with our rooks, it's not checkmate because the king just takes our rook. They will, duh, Nelson. But the same thing, if we go here, let's just say, the king can come over, and again, it's not checkmate, right? So you might have been tempted to say, all right, well then let's just go all the way over here and come down like this, because now the king is too far to stop us, right? And that makes sense, but you're forgetting about one thing, and it's these other pieces here. And wow, my, my kid is screaming in the background. Um, the bishop just moves to g5, and when you try to checkmate, they just block your rook, right? And you can't really do anything. If this ever happens, you're in trouble. Because remember, you only have these two pieces. So if they just eliminate one of them like this, it's only a matter of time before black's other pieces come into the game, and, and you're going to lose. Same thing with rook to b7, right? Bishop comes here, blocks your checkmate, okay? And there was one other way that you might have thought about, which is going here. The idea is to come down this way for the checkmate. But the problem here is that black has this crazy move queen to a2, and they actually control that square, and they're willing to sacrifice their queen because they have all these other pieces. They just get another one. And all you have is a rook. You can't win. You're going to lose, right? So none of those moves actually work, which is why you have to start out with a check. Okay? And the important thing about the check is that it starts to force the king this way. So for example, if the king tries to go this way, checkmate immediately, right? So you have to go the other way. And now if you'd like to pause, what's the winning move for white? We'll be out of chance to look at that. It's rook to d7, check again. And again, you might have been tempted to say, well, now can't we go to a7 because the bishop can no longer block, right? That's a good idea in theory, but there's also the other bishop and a move like bishop g4 accomplishes the same thing, right? Except it's with the other bishop and Black still survives. Okay. So that's why, again, it doesn't quite work. So what do we do here? Rook to d7 check, like I mentioned. And Black says, all right, let's go king to c8. Now, if they went to e8 instead, uh, this actually makes your job easier. If you'd like to pause, what's the winning line here for white? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, it's the move rook h to e7 check. King has to go back. Then you could swing over to g7. You're threatening checkmate here and here. And there's no real way for black to stop it except by going back to e8. Then you can jump over here. And it's essentially the same thing that we saw earlier where we we're trying to checkmate this way. But now, notice what happens if the bishop tries to block. We've shuffled the rook and we just simply come down this way. So we actually have the double threat. And the double threat from both ways is too powerful here for black to deal with. Okay. So that's why the king has to keep running. Okay, so king to c8. All right, white to play and win. What's the winning move? We've well, got a chance to look at that. Uh, again, it's rook check. 
and you're kind of seeing the pattern here of continuing to force the king, sorry, over to the corner. And remember, if the king ever comes back, right, we always can do this idea of check, force the king over, and then back to g7, just like I showed you before, where you create that double threat, and there's just no way for uh, for black to deal with it, okay? So that's why, going here, the main line, the king has to keep running over to b8, right? And again, we can go with the check, and again, the king runs, and again, you can go with the check, and again, the king runs, and if you, actually, I'll do one more move for you, we throw in this check, king goes to c8, and now if you would like to pause, this is really the critical moment and the, the, the tough moment in the, spot, in the puzzle. Why to play and win? What do you play here? If you had a chance to look at that, oh, and by the way, by the way, I have to pause here, just mention this. Stockfish still thinks it's a draw. I've just moved like, what, six moves or something? It still thinks it's a draw. Okay, so Stockfish loses this, this challenge. All right, uh, the winning move, wait for it, is Rook to F7. You have to go to F7 and not anywhere else. Now, let's talk about why this is the case. Well, first of all, we're threatening checkmate from both directions. But some of these other moves threaten checkmate from both directions, too. So let's see why they don't work. For example, Rook to, let's say, G7, because it makes sense. Why wouldn't you go as far away as you can? And we already looked at why Rook G7 makes a lot of sense, right? Because you can go here or here, creating the double threat like I showed you a couple times already, what could black possibly do? Wait for it. Queen to a2. Look at this incredible move. It's stopping both checkmates at the same time. You say, Nelson, that's not a great move because we just take the queen, right? But here's the problem. Here's the problem. Bishop to f4 is now a possibility because they can block this checkmate and in the previous position, if you would have played bishop f4, I would have said that doesn't do anything. I have checkmate here. But guess what? By sacrificing the queen first, now you go bishop to f4. This is no longer checkmate because that rook is not there. The king just escapes and runs away and hides and, and wins. So that's a brilliant queen sacrifice that opens up the opportunity for bishop to f4. And yes, you can you know go back here and threaten the checkmate again. But watch what happens. Bishop to e5 pins the rook. And now you're losing your rook and, and that's it. Okay, black's going to win. So, incredible move here. Queen to a2, which wins the game for black if you played rook to g7. Okay? So, going back here, that's why you can't go to g7. Now, instead of f7, you also could have tried to play rook to e7. But the problem here is that the king goes back and you don't have a follow-up. You just... You don't have the, the move that you need to play here, okay? The rook has to be on f7. You're going to see that in just a second. Um, yeah, if you go here, the king keeps attacking your rooks, and they're not, not far enough away, okay? So back to this position. Sorry, I get confused sometimes with the which line I'm looking at because there's so many random, like, rook lines. All right. Rook to f7. Only winning move. Now, we talked about queen to a2. Queen to a2 at this point does not work because you're stopping one checkmate. But you're not stopping the other one because notice, because our rook is not here, we have this checkmate, which is, that's it, right? So queen to a2 does not work. And trying to block with one of the bishops, like let's say here, to block this, again, you run into the problem if you don't stop the other one, okay? So the only thing black can do is play king to b8. And by the way, let's just keep an update here on, on stockfish. Still thinks it's a draw, okay? Keep an eye on that. All right, so what's the move? What's the winning move here for white? You got a chance to look at that. It's rook a to d7. Okay, d7. And again, you're threatening the checkmates, but you have to do it in just the right way. If you would have played rook to e7, thinking that you're threatening the double checkmates, look at the move the black has available. Bishop to g4, blocking both of them. Okay? And now you can see why rook to d7 is better. Because look at this, bishop g4... You're not blocking this one, okay? So it's all about it's all about avoiding all of these pieces and the different ways that they can block your rooks from checkmate. This is essentially what's happening, right? So rook to d7. Since you can't use any of these pieces if you're black, you have to move your king, king to c8, because you're close enough now that 
Both of these moves are no longer checkmate because you would be able to take a rook, right? Okay, so what does white do to win the game? If you had a chance to look at that, let's see if you're smarter than Stockfish, by the way. Oops, sorry. Um, I didn't mean to do that. By the way, Stockfish still thinks it's a draw. Okay, and the winning move is rook. Oh, where did I go? I'm, I'm losing the line here. Rook to e7. Okay, so it was the same idea as before, but remember last time the bishop went to g4 and blocked. Now the king is in the way and it can't do that. All right, great. But the king can still go here. White to play and win. What should you play? And again, Stockfish still uh, thinks it's a draw. Okay, Stockfish, you're so confused. All right. The winning move for white is rook to b7. Okay, again, creating this double checkmate threat and forcing the king to go back, right? Because again, if you look, you know, none of the bishops can stop you. If you go here to stop this one, you get checkmated here. Um, and that, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, so king back to c8. And finally, I won't show you because it gives away the line, but finally at this moment, Stockfish realizes, oh, it's a checkmate for white. So like 10, yeah, 10 moves into the puzzle before Stockfish could figure it out. White to play and win, what's the winning move? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the move is rook f to c7, check. King goes over, and what we are doing is setting up the follow-up move, rook to g7, okay? And just to remind you, if you would have played, well, you, you can't play rook to g7 here, uh, because you're not actually threatening anything because the, the rook is undefended and black can do whatever they want, okay? So you have to throw in the check first, and then you go back to g7. And do you remember earlier when I said rook to g7 was like a good try, but it didn't work? Do you remember what the difference was about the position? The rook here, this rook, was actually on a7. And black had that crazy move, queen to a2, which saved both checkmates. But now you can't go queen to a2 if you're black because the, the rook is on the b file. So it's just, just small, subtle little things that totally change how this, this works. And there's actually nothing that black can do because you can't stop both of these. You can stop one of them, but then you get checkmated here. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and if you stop this one, well, then you get checkmated here. And so there's nothing for black to do except move the king. Um, Again, and then we can finish out this puzzle. Actually, I don't want to tell you that this is another moment in the puzzle that's tricky as well. <clears throat> I apologize, guys. My throat is, is bothering me, messing up the lines, but I, I don't have time to re-record this, so I'm going to just keep it as it is, and, and sorry about that. Why to play and win from this position? If you had a chance to look at that, the move is rook B to E7. Okay, and again, you have this moment of like, you have to choose the right square because if you go for this one, bishop to g5. And again, black stops both of your options. Okay, so rook to e7. And again, we've seen this with the other bishop, right? It blocks the bishop so that if you try that, this is checkmate, okay? So it's just incredible. You have to be so precise with exactly where these rooks land. So black's only move, king to d8. And now, finally, you can slide over here. Again, threatening checkmate like this. King's going to keep chasing you. And uh, white to play and win. You have one final move to, to play correctly here. You had a chance to look at that. It's rook to b7. And finally, what we have done is forced the checkmate next move. The queen a2 only stops one checkmate. Okay? It doesn't stop this one. And then if you stop this one with like a bishop, let's just say... It doesn't stop this one. And if you try to go here so that you could block that one, you don't stop this checkmate. And you can see how there's just nothing that you could do. If you try to move the king close because it's defended, you don't stop that one. There's no way to stop the checkmate. Fascinating position. I know that that was super complicated, and I don't believe I did it justice quite explaining it in the best way possible, but it's a little tricky to keep all the lines straight, uh, even when I have them already in the analysis board. Anyway, hopefully you can still get the idea and uh, enjoy that. Congratulations if you saw any of those moves, really. Uh, very difficult puzzle, but a fun one. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.